Well, today we are going to go snorkeling and uh, going out of uh, the Paradise Scuba and Snorkeling Center here at uh, La uh, Parquera in um, Puerto Rico. Here's the shop. Waiting for when to get their, their stuff, get ready to go. Those things fit? Yeah, they fit beautifully. Hey. Going out to the boat.
Well, I originally wasn't going to post this video. Um, I came back from a snorkeling trip and I was uh, just, we were just a little, it was sort of a little different than what we've ever, ever experienced before. And uh, it left me with a really bad taste. Yes, yes, to the point, to the point that, we, you know, we weren't going to make it, you know, the, the underwater snorkeling wasn't great. The underwater snorkeling was actually, you know, not so, really not so great. And, um, you know, we saw a couple fish, uh, but, um, you know, what, what we're going to make this video about here now is, is, is our experience on that trip. Yeah. And we've been on multiple, you know, multiple uh, snorkeling trips before, and uh, this one... It was disappointing for a lot of reasons, but um, the biggest one was that I felt like this company is actually damaging the coral and it is not good for sea life. Um, Ordinarily, when you go on a snorkeling trip, the first thing they do after teaching you how to use your equipment is that they tell you about the fragility of the reef. And, and how long how long it takes for coral to grow. Yeah, like it takes 10 years for coral to grow back if you damage it. Yeah. And, um, oh, nice bird. <laughs> and a lot of the reefs around Puerto Rico were damaged by Hurricane Maria, so they're actually in a more fragile state even than usual, and they're in the midst of rebuilding. But there was no training about that. No, and we were, on, we were on a trip with a bunch of new people who have never snorkeled before, so they didn't know they didn't know the basics. And you know, some of the things that they tell you, you know, is you know, you, you don't never touch the coral, not with your hands. You know, you avoid touching it with your uh, with your flippers, and um, you know, you just you just, know they're called fins, right? Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little joke for anyone who gets that out there, but uh, <laughs> you know, so so you avoid touching the coral at, at, at all costs. Keep your body horizontal in yeah. the water as and much as you can, which shouldn't be hard because it's salt water. Yeah, and as long you know, as you keep your face in the water, you're, you 
the rest of your body will sort of follow and float on top. But uh, that that in, that bit of instruction was never never put out, and they they put us out into water that was super super shallow, you know, probably at some points in time, you know, four feet four feet deep, and uh, it was also really windy and rough. Yeah, and uh, but you know the, the the newbies, you know, were were up and down. Their their what are the fins? Their fins were touching the bottom. Coral, the, one of the people on the trip who was uh, sort of guiding us, he was up and down and his fins were on the coral all the I time. I saw him standing on the coral. Yeah. And first I thought it was one of our fellow snorkelers and then I realized it was actually one of our tour leaders. And so I went up to him and said, you're kicking the coral. And uh, he looked at me like I was crazy, but you know, yeah. if your tour leaders aren't being careful of the coral, how is anyone else going to be? And as I was snorkeling along, I could see damaged coral all over the place there. Yeah. Not just watching our people who kept stepping in it, but I could see broken pieces of coral everywhere. And it just broke my heart to see and, what and, they were doing. And the main tour guide you know, kept uh, you know, diving down and picking up stuff to show people. Oh, and not just to show us. Yeah, exactly. He seemed to, to think it. that the ocean was a petting zoo. Yeah. And he he would take he would have a um, he had this spiny um, starfish, and he was like he put it in your hand. He called everyone over one by one so he could put it in your hand. And I thought, we're not actually supposed to interact like this. No, and the sea urchins and all all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was it was not good, uh, but uh, you know so we wanted to put out this video to you know. Put some put so that people understand some good tap tips and some good techniques for when they do go snorkeling. Yeah. And uh, you know that that also includes using reef reef safe uh, uh, practices. Reef no, reef safe uh, lotion. Oh yeah. Uh, no oh, sunscreen. they didn't mention that no, either. No. So it's a uh, you know use a reef safe uh, a sunscreen, which you know, they didn't mention either. So it was all in all, it was not a good day for us. Uh, we are going to try, if we ever go on another snorkeling tour, to be more cautious and more uh, uh, selective on who we go with and what mm -hmm. they're going to do and what their practices are. Uh, because yeah. you know these guys were obviously there principally for the money, and uh, you know not to protect the reefs, uh, like like many of the tour groups we've been right. on before. They, they people just guard, I mean, jealously guard those reefs and uh, you know the, the, the creatures on them. Yeah. So. so at the end of this video, um, please look down at the content because we will have links to help you to be careful yourself when you're snorkeling and how to take care of the ocean. So we'd like to pass that on to you and please pass it on to any of your friends who are ever going snorkeling. And until then, may your suitcase always be messy. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Luego.